Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. and welcome to episode 50 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. I'm Lola Phoenix. Please send your questions to nonmonogamyhelp at gmail.com and they'll either be read in the podcast or the column anonymously. If you want to read the columns and listen to the podcast, you can go to nonmonogamyhelp.com. Subscribe to our newsletter by going to go.nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash email and follow us on Twitter at nonmonogamyhelp. If you want to support the columns and the podcast, please consider becoming a patron. Even $1 helps to support the daily running of the columns and the podcast and shows a general vote of support. You can do that by going Going to patreon.com forward slash Lola Phoenix. If you donate five dollars or more a month with your name, your name with your permission will be read at the end of the podcast. Let's get to this week's discussion question. If this is the first time you're hearing this, every week before I read the letter, I put forth a discussion question that you can use with your friends, partners, metamors, anyone to get to know them a little bit. I also answer it myself briefly to give you a little bit of context. This week's discussion question is, if you were to get a job offer in another country, how would your relationships change? So I think this is a really, really interesting question, even if this is something that you don't think would ever, ever happen to you. I think it's always interesting to see because life comes at you fast and you never know what's going to happen. And I think that it's always important to consider how your relationships might change because you can start off in a relationship thinking, oh, I'll never do this or I'll never do that. And then circumstances change and you never know what will happen I think for me um, it would be interesting I think it would depend on the job offer I think um, I've been through a big immigration journey to come to the UK and that was really really trying and really really difficult and sometimes it's just really difficult to continue to do something like that so yeah that would be that would be really hard for me but I don't think it would be completely out of the question it would just I think things would just change in that I'd have to try and see how things change basically that's not really an answer but that's the best I can offer for that (laughs) for that reason um so yeah the discussion question again is if you were to get a job offer in another country how would your relationships change so let's get to this week's letter I think I'm polyamorous, but it's hard to say due to several complicated factors. I've been dating my boyfriend since college, and I met him when I was at a pretty low point in my life, and I had very low self-esteem. He was my first almost everything, but I met him on a break when I went back to school pretty far away. We decided to keep dating long distance. However, pretty soon I started regretting it when my really good friend slash crush admitted to me that he liked me for some time. My boyfriend said I could kiss him if I wanted, but I felt nervous and confused about it. And when we got a little too physical at some parties, holding hands slash cuddling, he got really upset and jealous and we had a big fight. Since then, we have been opening and closing the relationship at different times. There have been three major phases of non-monogamy. The first was when I studied abroad and dated someone so seriously that I considered him my boyfriend. My first boyfriend was very upset by this and I was upset at how he was talking to me. We ended up in couples counseling and it felt better. The second time was right before I graduated when I said I wanted to try casual dating slash sex and he said I should. I hooked up with so many people in a short time that he got upset, like I tried to get in as many men as possible as soon as I could. It hurt that he said he wanted me to explore but got mad at the way I did it. It ended up not really being for me anyway. I came out of it with one more person that I felt pretty serious about and we still talk sometimes but rarely see each other. The third is when I moved abroad soon after graduating, and we negotiated a new agreement where I could do whatever I wanted with whoever. He was going to trust me and our relationship more. I met with a few of my established people a few times, and he was fine with it, but the main problem is when I don't see him for a long time, I stop being interested in the physical stuff with him for a while until I have warmed up to being around him again. This isn't really the case with others. More chemistry, shorter relationships, so it feels more exciting. I'm not sure, but it causes my boyfriend to get really paranoid that I'm going to leave him for someone else, especially with the distance between us right now. We've had brief stints of living together, though, and I enjoyed them and felt happy with the relationship. Currently, I'm seeing a new person. It is complicated because he is in my friend group here abroad, and I have to keep a lot of secrets from almost everyone I know, as as most people know about my boyfriend. And my boyfriend keeps talking about marriage and kids with me, which stresses me out. I want marriage and kids but I don't want to lose the other relationships either and I'm very confused about who I want to be with be that committed to and how it would work 
I know my boyfriend probably sees it as we are the primary relationship and everyone else is just temporary thing for fun, but I don't really like that hierarchy to be so stiff. These other people are people I want to keep in my life and they all bring different aspects that I enjoy. Sometimes my boyfriend gets sad about the distance and tells me things like how excited he is for when we can just be together, the two of us, and makes me think that he's expecting monogamy. Like if we get married and have kids and it just feels really scary, that he thinks that he can just say the word and expect all this to stop, or that what I am doing isn't good in the context of raising children, or that if I like other people as much as I like him, that I'm doing something wrong. I've encouraged him to date other people as well because I think he is a person who needs lots of physical comfort and someone to get him out of ruts, but he hasn't, either because he is not good at finding people, especially since his co-workers know he has a girlfriend, or because he is not actually interested. Of course, I wouldn't force him to be polyamorous, but given my situation, I think it would make things a lot easier and take the burden off of me to make him feel happy and loved all the time. I've asked him if he even gets anything out of the relationship being the way that it is, or if he just puts up with it for my sake. He has assured me that parts of it excite him, but it is usually hard to predict whether something will excite him or upset him. Also, sort of related, I don't really understand what love is supposed to feel like. My boyfriend says he loves me, and I grew up quite romantic, so I always thought love meant that you only wanted that person and you felt ready to spend the rest of your life with him and have kids. I guess I sort of am looking for that feeling, but have never felt it, so I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. Something my boyfriend often says when checking in or on how my relationships are going is, sounds great, just don't fall in love with him. I always want to say, I don't know, even know what love is, and if I did, why would you not want me to feel it? He knows I don't really feel those lovey things the same way he does, so I'm not sure what this warning is supposed to mean. So basically, I'm just wondering, am I doing something wrong? Should I be doing something differently? Is there a way to keep my long-distance relationship steady and, he and healthy, given that sometimes I feel drained, like I have to prop it up emotionally slash sexually? How can I feel better about wanting to get married and have kids with my current situation? Is love just a social construct? Thanks so much in advance for any advice. Before I get to my response to this week's letter, I want to make sure I do one little plug that supports the podcast. A lot of my advice involves encouraging people to seek therapy, and that can be hard. You can't always find a therapist that's near you. Sometimes they're not polyamory friendly, sometimes they're not LGBT friendly, sometimes they're not whatever kind of identity that would help you feel more connected to them. It can be really, really hard to find a therapist that gets you. And if that's the case, you can't find a therapist in your immediate area, then you can try BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online platform where you can find a therapist and chat to them online, send them messages, and, and you know, it's a lot simpler sometimes in face-to-face -face therapy. You could be like me and really struggle to get to a therapist's office. And BetterHelp does also offer some financial support options if traditional therapy isn't affordable for you, and that's another reason you haven't pursued therapy. So if you want to try it, support the podcast, you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash non-monogamy help, no hyphens, and you can get 10% off of your first month. And why not? Give it a try. Now, let's get to my response to this week's letter. So the big thing here is again i'm gonna i said this in episode 48 i'm gonna say it again polyamory is not about finding multiple relationships that are partially suited to you i think that a lot of people get into polyamory because they don't want to break up with somebody and they they just sort of collect semi-sustaining semi-fulfilling relationships with people until they reach a kind of permissible stasis with people it just feels like your boyfriend doesn't actually want polyamory. Like, you, you're kind of saying what is seems like the truth. Like, it seems like he thinks this is just a temporary thing. And it's not a temporary thing for you. Clearly, you have some fundamental disagreements about the way you want to live your lives. And if it makes you feel any better, this happens all the time with monogamous people. It's not just a thing with, okay, one person's polyamorous, one person's monogamous. Two polyamorous people can have this kind of incompatibility as well in terms of just not wanting to live their lives the same way. Monogamous people can have this incompatibility. So for you, it's like, okay, yeah, you want to have kids and get married and stuff, but you want to be in a polyamorous relationship. You want to have multiple partners. You want to have this freedom. And there are so many, so many, so many, so many signs that this is not what he wants. He thinks that this is temporary and the whole like, just don't fall in love with them. Ugh, I just feel like that's a very clear sign that someone 
you know, it's okay. Like some people do have an open style relationship where they are primarily in love with one person and that they, they do have just like flings and, and things like that. And if that's something you both agree on, then that's absolutely fine. But it doesn't sound like that's what you want. So you're stuck in this sort of situation where he has a very different idea of what's going on than you do. And I think that you've been hesitant to get rid of the relationship that you have with him because, you know, it's kind of a bit what's called a sunk sunk cost fallacy. I keep saying sunken cost fallacy, but I think it's actually just sunk cost fallacy. But it's basically where because you've put so much effort in, you're really hesitant to actually get rid of it because you're like, well, I put so much in, I have to keep putting into it. But actually, you're not really doing anything but digging a deeper hole. So I think that you need to really both sit down and be really clear with each other about what it is that you actually want and I honestly like don't really blame you because if you've been dating him if you've been dating him since you were in college that does mean you are quite young and and I mean everyone's different some people are ready to settle down more or less like quote-unquote settle down when they are 22 some people are not really ready for that until they're 32 and if you're not ready for that then you're not ready for that and I just feel like you know, moving to long distance, it's funny that we had that discussion question today because it was really apt for this qu- for this whole entire question you have. But you move to long distance to sort of try and keep the relationship alive. And understandably, you did that because he was your first everything. It's, it's quite hard to just break up. Sometimes you want to give that a try, and that's okay to give that a try. But that nothing is going to solve such an inherent incompatibility. Like, there are things that can be worked around. There are things that you can negotiate and compromise with. And I do think that, you know, especially if you have a relationship where you live together or you plan on living together, there is going to be some compromise because there's always compromise with any adult that you live with to a certain extent. But there are some things that you can't really compromise on. And like having kids, for example, if you had no interest in having children, there's no real way to compromise on that and trying to have children when you don't know that you're sure that you want to it's yeah so there's lots of situations here where you know I think there are obviously situations where maybe he felt uncomfortable like being uncomfortable with you know saying okay go ahead and and sleep with whomever you want and then being uncomfortable he he might feel uncomfortable when he tries polyamory when you're with other people sometimes when you're trying stuff out you have to be comfortable with your partner being uncomfortable and you have to go okay my partner's uncomfortable and instead of stopping what you're doing you have to work with him to address that and I think sometimes when people try out polyamory they go okay oh my partner feels uncomfortable stop 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 everything stop everything go back and that doesn't actually fix the problem the problem is that they feel uncomfortable and how do they cope with it so there were some situations where you know there could have been a little bit more done to see if he really is interested in polyamory if if it would have just been that situation i would have said okay you should let him feel that discomfort and work through that but the fact that he's saying stuff like don't fall in love with him i think that your your intuition is right that it's not it's not that he is at all you know interested in polyamory like it just doesn't sound like he wants he wants he doesn't even he it sounds like he could potentially do a situation where you did have just flings but that isn't what you want you do want multiple relationships and you don't want to abandon that for any kind of situation so I do think that you're incompatible I don't think that you should worry so much about what love is and whether or not you feel it having bigger chemistry with newer people or different people isn't surprising it might be what's called new relationship energy which is where you have kind of like you know someone sparkly and new and and that's exciting and and you know you have that when you start off in a relationship even but then when you have a kind of a longer term relationship it's not that like the spark completely dulls and if you put effort in the spark doesn't completely dull but someone who is new and shiny is different and new and shiny and so you feel like ooh. so it you might have more chemistry and you can be in a situation where you have more chemistry with some partners than with others and that isn't a terrible thing but you would be I think you would be less concerned about it if there wasn't all this pressure on your shoulders to kind of go back to a monogamous way of being which is kind of what he wants all of the signs are kind of pointing to that all of the signs are pointing to him basically expecting you to go okay well I'm done and I just think that's a 
I mean, you could. I mean, you, maybe one day, just like you did when you mentioned how you, you know, had a lot of sex in a short period of time, and then you were like, nah, it's not for me. Maybe you will one day go, nah, it's not for me. But he shouldn't expect that to happen. And he shouldn't equally pressure you for that to happen. And I don't really blame him because I think he cares about you. I think he doesn't want to break up. And I think he's trying to adjust to the situation so that, you know, he he can stay with you because he cares about you. But sometimes, sometimes, honestly, when people... Some people can try polyamory and see if it's see if it's for them and know it's not for them. I think that sometimes when pe- people are so afraid of breaking up, they end up in a situation that ends up being more painful than the breakup would have been. And I think that this situation is probably going, like, he's clearly not going to break up with you. He's going to try in the hopes that you're going to switch back to being monogamous. And, uh, I mean, you could keep, putting you could keep digging this hole but I just don't think that it's it's a good idea you feel burdened in this relationship he's kind of giving you all the signs that he's not into opening it for the long term so you gotta just sit down and have a real honest discussion about what it is that you both want because I just don't think that this is actually what he wants unfortunately and I think he's maybe just lying to himself a tiny tiny bit so that he can stay with you because I mean all people do that I don't blame anyone who does that because that's a very human thing to to not want to break up with somebody but sometimes two people can care very 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 much about each other two people can be almost compatible in tons of other ways they can improve each other's lives and be really really great for each other but they're just not compatible past that and it's nobody's fault it's not your fault for being you it's not his fault for being him it's just yeah sometimes you're just inherently not compatible you just want different things out of life it happens like if you think about it it can happen to a monogamous couple if let's say one of the one of the people in the couple is a doctor or a lawyer and has a very time intensive career and the other person just can't handle that it can happen if the one person is you know has a t- type of career that pulls them away and makes them travel all the time it, you know maybe the one person can't handle that so it, that can happen in in a lot of different situations but it's not really anybody's fault in this situation I think probably what's best to do I mean you could just kind of break up but I do think like I think that it'll it'll make more sense to come to that agreement mutually if you actually sit down and talk about what it is that you want out of out of life like what what it is that you what your ideal situation looks like and then you can say you know he'll maybe sit there and say oh I want us to be together and be monogamous and wife and kids picket fence da, da, da. and then you say well I would like to have kids and but I I want to have multiple partners and then there's there's not there's not many places you can go (laughs) once you have that discussion so it's worth having that discussion and actually getting that out rather than just prolonging it because dragging it on is eh, I think it'll just make it pain for you for you both I wish that I had something better to say I really hate I really hate it when my advice is eh, you're not compatible but I just if he had said something else, if he had given some indication that he saw polyamory as a little bit beneficial to him, he doesn't have to date tons of people. Like, it's fine if he doesn't want to date. Like, I don't date a lot. Like, I hate dating. So, it's fine if he doesn't want to date. That doesn't necessarily mean he can't do polyamory, but it's all the other stuff around that. Like, saying, oh, you know, um, you know, don't fall in love and I can't wait till we're together alone. Like, all that other stuff is just a really massive indication that... He's probably not in in it for the polyamory long haul, unfortunately. So have that discussion and it might take you to unfortunately where you where you might need to be, which is not together. Yeah. I'm sorry, I wish I had something better to advise, but I, I do think that that is the best in the long term for you both. I hope that helps and good luck. Thank you for listening to episode 50 of Non-Monogamy Help. Super exciting. Yay! Episode 50. 
If you want to be awesome, you can donate to our Patreon. Donating $5 or more means your name with your permission will be read at the end of the podcast. And this week's current patrons are Laura Boylan, Chris Elbury Jones, Duke, and James Wartell. If for whatever reason you can't become a patron, don't worry, life happens, I get it. If you take five minutes to log into iTunes and rate and review the podcast, that'd be super helpful. Helps other people find the podcast. I don't know how it all works. I just know that it's good for people to rate and review my podcast. So please do that if you can. You don't have to write a review if you if you don't want to. You could just rate it i don't mind just give it give it five stars please so yeah that would be extremely helpful if you can't be be a patron or anything like that um since this is a 10th episode so 50th episode we are going to take a break for a week so you won't get another podcast in a fortnight you should get it in three weeks and but there will be a column the next week and then there'll be a break the week after and then another column and then a podcast because that's usually how it's done so yeah Thank you so much for listening. Bye. You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. Our podcast music has been provided by Chris Albury Jones at albury-jones.com. And the art was made by Dom Jung at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you for listening. <laughs>